Now, uh, the second big player is Sarah Palin, who is a woman in the race. And uh, everybody knows Sarah, former governor of Alaska. She originally attended Assemblies of God Church, but denies being Pentecostal for probably obvious reasons, if you understand anything about Pentecostal theology, and uh, considers herself non-denominational as a Christian, but obviously a very strong Christian woman. She's a commentator on Fox News, has two different books. She gets no less than $75,000 every time she speaks. That is if you're paying the price from the Speakers Bureau that's advertised, and is obviously a Tea Party favorite. Uh, she's striking in her physical appearance, which really makes her very interesting. She has a kind of a neat, fun, quirky personality. She has these little sayings that make her interesting and fascinating to listen to and to watch. Uh, not as substantive as we'd like her to be. I think that's a negative for her. You know, I think she's done a much better job than the Katie Couric interview coming along in terms of understanding policy and her ability to be under fire and really to, uh, to respond. But Right now, in, in a general poll uh, with her against Obama, she's trailing by 15%, so uh, her negatives are pretty high. And so it's doubtful to me. I, think, I don't think she's going to get in. I don't think she's serious about getting in, frankly. I think that you know, she leads the Tea Party movement. She's a multimillionaire now. She's got a national platform of the Tea Party and in Fox News. Why would she give all that up for the criticism of going back through the Katie Couric's of the world who are just trying to nail her on minutia of public policy, which she doesn't drill down to unless you're talking about energy policy that well. So I, I predict she's not going to get in. She is giving, they're all trying to say they're in to, you know, release, the, get their notoriety and get their name out there, but I just don't see her as being a serious candidate. Most recently, they just updated her website, and it was like, oh, they updated her website. Maybe that means she's going to run, but it takes a lot more than that. She does have a pack. She did endorse a lot of people, um, but again, I, I predict that eventually she will not uh, run as a viable candidate. Haley Barber was in the race until this past Wednesday. He got out of the race, so we won't spend a lot of time on him. Um, and then uh, Donald Trump, the Don. You gotta love the Don, right? <laughs> oh goodness, where do we start? He has very high name recognition right now because everybody knows him. He's a, he's a familiar face, he seems like a safe, he understands finances, okay, maybe that's, a, maybe that's a guy we can invest in. But you have to learn more about this fellow. He's, on, he's an entrepreneur, he owns casinos, hotels, real estate. Uh, technically, he's a Presbyterian. There's a great CBN interview uh, where he's asked, it's a 60 second clip on his faith. You have to see it sometime. It'll, it'll tell you a lot about where he's at with things. Uh, but he says, religion is a wonderful thing. That was one of the quotes on there. He's a billionaire from New York. He also has a home in Palm Beach here in Florida. Uh, and uh, is a very gutsy Tea Party speaker. As you know right now, he's kind of a birth certificates, certificate is the central focus of his message. Some have argued that he's actually been able to force the president to come out with whatever this certificate is that's online now. Uh, and so that's an interesting development. Uh, but uh, he has high, uh, high, very high favorables just because people are familiar with him. Um, formerly pro-choice, in one of his previous books, he said he was pro-choice. Uh, but was uncomfortable with the surgery involved with it, he said, and uh, now has become pro-life, and so take that for what it's worth. Uh, he also has had, uh, been married three times and has no governing experience, so these will be liabilities to him as well when the, when the population of people begin to learn more about this. Already we're seeing him decline in, in some of the polls in terms of just as people learn more and more about him. And what's really interesting about this is that He's doing product placement for his reality TV show in the campaign, talking about, I'm going to fire you and, you know, all this stuff. And so, to me, I think it's just a ploy to, I mean, if he did decide to do it, he could be a serious contender because he's got enough money to throw into it. He's got the name ID, uh, and he's not doing too bad in terms of polling, but I think that uh, it would be very difficult when people learn about his gambling and his personal life and the approach of past, again, remember the three coalitions within the party, the establishment may swallow him, but I don't think religious conservatives are going to swallow a Donald Trump when they begin to learn about him. And the Tea Party might. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic. But I don't think he's serious, really. Uh, uh, he's going to have serious scrutiny and it'll cause his polling to go down. I think he's just using this to help promote himself and promote his TV shows. And so I could be wrong, but that's my prediction. I think he will ultimately uh, get out of the race. Now, will it be Ron Paul or Rand Paul? Um, at, uh, this was the question for several weeks. Um, the son ran newly elected 
uh, in the Congress basically said he would not run against his dad. And the answer is, as of last week, it's going to be Ron Paul. He has announced an open and exploratory committee. Ron Paul is actually a medical doctor. He's a congressman from Texas. Um, I would say he's a nominal Baptist, and that's probably judgmental, but you never know that he was a Baptist unless you look it up because there's nothing that he does or says or policy-wise follows anything that looks or smells Baptist, so I guess technically he's a Baptist, but he, he's previously ran for president, as you know, as a libertarian, and now he's running again as a Republican. Uh, just opened his fundraising committee. Uh, many, many in the Tea Party like him. He, he kind of speaks to that hardcore Ross Perot, tough on the economy, you know, uh, you know guns and the libertarian uh, types will really support him. And those people really, as you see, he won the CPAC straw poll. They have a very fierce, loyal following. I mean, those folks are like green berets, and so they can really produce results that may appear to be bigger than they really are. He's obviously a long shot candidate um, but I'm not sure he can compete with the big names. I mean, something really drastic would have to happen where a lot of people have to dr uh, drop out. And his biggest problem, in my judgment, is that when social conservatives learn that he's against all the gay marriage bans that were passed, and he's fine with gay marriage happening, and that he thinks that all drugs should be decriminalized and other crazy libertarian policies, I think you're going to see him go way down. I don't think there's any way he could get enough oxygen to win Iowa or South Carolina. Uh, maybe he could do some damage in, in, in uh, New Hampshire.